Hey guys, how is your day going? Wednesday morning here. Still very snowy in New England. Um, just you're having a great day. Thought I'd do a little morning video. Just say hi. Um, I got a busy day today. Got a bunch of things to do in my office this morning. Uh, this evening I'm going to be speaking in Stamford, Connecticut. I'm going to be doing a teaching on following Jesus. And this evening going to be speaking on John 14 12 where Jesus said the works I will do you will do also and greater works than these will you do because I go to the Father he's gone to the Father and we're called to we're called to follow Jesus you know often we think of following Jesus in terms of um, just becoming a disciple become salvation which is true but following Jesus means walking as he walked it means having the relationship with the Father that he had and it means doing what he did so I'm going to be exploring that today. Excited about that. Um, what else is coming up? I'm going to be doing a ministry school live evening tomorrow uh, for all of you in my ministry school. Uh, we're going to be live on video tomorrow. Friday, we have our annual Christmas banquet here in Sturbridge. Saturday, I'm speaking up in Vermont at Healing Grace Ministries. And Sunday in Mass and Connecticut again on birthing miracles. So busy day, uh, events every single evening. Good. Um, hey, I have a word I'm going to share for a second, but let me just do a couple of housekeeping things as well. If you're new to my YouTube channel, why not hit the subscribe button down there or also share this on social media. And come on, the more of God's word we can get into people, the more they will do well in life. But let me just share a quick word for the day. I was thinking this morning, I was reading my Bible about the Father's love and just what an important thing it is. And I just want to share something really, really brief, but actually that transformed my life, that saved my life, actually, and that I believe can you can incorporate in your life. Here's my challenge to you. Do you know that God loves you? Do you know the, the Father's love? I think if we don't, I think there's a glorious place. I think when we look at Jesus, I think Jesus walked. You know, he had good things happen to him. He had bad things happen to him. But I think he walked absolutely enveloped in the knowledge that his father loved him. And not just the knowledge kind of intellectually, but the experience of the father's love. And I think God wants you and I to walk in that same um, experiential knowledge of the father's love everywhere we go. And if you don't have that, don't check out. Listen, I'm going to give you four quick keys today to walking in his love. Um, why is this important? It's really the key to everything, isn't it? Because if we don't, you know, when we don't know God's love, we're always chasing God's love. You know, and really at a human level, so I, I look at people and so much of what most people are doing all of their lives, even as older people, is trying to get the blessing and the approbation and the affection even of the parents sometimes parents who died many years ago you know and it, it's such a great thing with Jesus that he starts when 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 Jesus begins his ministry God tells him he succeeded before he ever starts remember he says you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and I think it's so vital that we know that some of you know my testimony that in the I became a believer in 1984 and I was uh, I've always been passionate about God and ministry and I, I knew really from day one that God had a call on my life. I, I, you know, it was actually a problem to me when I was 14, 15, 16 in high school, because I just intellectually, I checked out of high school and I was a, I'm a reasonably intelligent person and it was doing well in high school. But I, I just had this thing, hey, I'm going to serve God and I don't need algebra. I'm going to serve God and I don't need to do this. And uh, it wasn't a good attitude and it wasn't a mature attitude. But it was the one I had. I was just so passionate about the, the things of heaven and the things of God. And I was in full-time ministry when I was 17. I was working for the Assemblies of God in the UK, in the church planting section there, and then traveling in ministry and doing other things. Here's my point in saying that. I had a real revelation of faith and saw God do many miracles and healings, and that began opening doors. And I had a full schedule of preaching all over the UK and in Ireland, just because of miracles in my life. I, I knew how to believe God for miracles, and I still do, but what I didn't know was that God loved me. 
I knew it intellectually. I knew Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. But I'd never really got to the place where that was a, a reality embedded on the tablet of my heart. And, you know, I just know my life got changed. Um, I, I got frustrated. I, I ended up walking away from ministry, not because of some big, terrible sin. I was just empty inside. And uh, several years later, when I'm walking away, ignoring God, one day Jesus gate crashed my life in 1998, it would be. And um, literally, he said three words that changed my life. He said, I love you. And when he said that to me, it wasn't information. It really was a revelation. When God says something to you, the, the love comes with the words. And it was like God poured the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean on my head. I was just enveloped in his love. And it was such a glorious experience for, for several weeks, probably two or three months. I just went around like wrapped like a, like a baby in cotton wool, wrapped in this sense of the Father's love for me. Um, but... Like most experiences do, like all experiences do, if you're honest, after a while, that glorious experience began to wane, began to go down. You know, no experience from God. Let me say this carefully. When God gives you an experience, it always stays with you, but it doesn't always stay in your emotions, in your soul. It stays in the spirit. And um, there are times, like John the Baptist, we can have a great revelation Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And in, in a year or two later, be saying, are you the one who should come or should we look for another? Because your soul um, loses, your soul can't stay in any kind of ecstatic state, if you will. Your soul is affected by all kind of different things. And I got to the place, I remember, um, again, about six months, eight months later, where I realized I'd, I'd had this amazing life-changing revelation of God's love. And then I'd lost it. And I began fasting and praying and it was like I was begging God to give me the feeling again, give me the revelation, give me the, zap me again with his love. And here's what God showed me. He showed me really four simple steps that I want to give you today that transformed my life, but that actually taught me to stay in that love. And these four steps are these, knowledge, faith, experience, and lifestyle. And in effect, what I was doing is I was saying to God, Come and blast me. Come and give me a supernatural experience. Come and pour your love all over me again. And what God said to me is, no, you, rather than you getting a, a zap from the Holy Spirit, if you will, or an angel or whatever, go to my word. And he actually led me, led me to several verses, but one of them was 1 John 4, um, 16. It says, we know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. He who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Hmm. We've known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. He who abides in love abides in God and God in him. And God led me through this again, this four-step process. I just want to drop this on your heart today, get you thinking about it. Knowledge, faith, experience, and lifestyle. Knowledge, we need to know the love that God has for us. And we can simply come to God's word, the Bible, you know, Jesus said in uh, John 14, verse 6, as the Father loves me, so have I loved you. But then he says, continue in my love. Most of us know, most of us know what the Bible says. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Um, but we actually, we've got to put that knowledge in front of our eyes. We've got to read that. We've known and believe the love of ours. Secondly, we've actually got to believe that. And we all have faith. You have enough faith. You've got all the faith you need for the Christian life. I've never said to anybody in my whole ministry, you don't have enough faith. Most of our challenges, we don't know how to use our faith. We don't know how to activate our faith, or maybe we're not doing that. So we have faith, but faith gets activated by hearing the word of God. So we know we can, we, number one, we can come to God's word that says he loves us. What does it mean to believe that? It means I, I stand on that and I, I begin making that my proclamation. I begin saying, Father, thank you that in the same way you love Jesus, the love that you showered on your son, you love me. Thank you, Lord, that you behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the sons of God, the children of God. 1 John 3 verse 2. We need to believe that. And again, faith isn't this cerebral 
intellectual acquiescence to a truth. Faith is when you take what God says and you say, thank you, God, this is true. I may not be feeling it right now, but this is true. I am loved by the God of heaven. And I would encourage you, if you want to, if you want to take um, truth, both from that kind of intellectual, theoretical, theological realm and embed it in your heart. What you need to do is think on it. What you need to do is thank on it. What you need to do is say it. What you need to do is pray it. What you need to do is walk it out. What you need to do is believe it's true even when you don't feel it's true. And here's the glorious secret. This is where a lot of people miss it between step two and step three. Step two is faith. Step three is experience. If you will, if you'll receive with meekness the engrafted word. Do you remember Mary said when the angel Gabriel brought her a word in Luke 1? Mary said, oh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but be it unto me according to your word. The angel then said, in effect, if you receive the word, the power of the Almighty will overshadow you. Yeah, and when we receive God's word, God brings us into the experience of his love. And that's such a cool thing. It really, that's really where God wants you to live. And then lastly, what he wants us to do is not, the danger for all of us is that we can, in the same way as I received a sovereign experience, one that God initiated, and I enjoyed it for a season, but then my experience began to wane. We can do the same thing. We can come and stand in faith and hold God's word, and that will produce experience in our life. But the danger for all of us is that we, we after a while, run on the fumes of the experience. Yeah? God's love is not an emotion in your soul. God's love produces an emotion in your soul. And the danger is we can, we can park in that step three, if you will, and feel loved by God, enjoy his presence for a season, and then it will begin to go down. The danger is like the frog in the water, we don't even notice it going down. And, and the real key is step four, will we build a lifestyle around this, which is really abiding in his love, and by that, I mean, we build this lifestyle of, of coming back to these words of saying, God, you said this, I am loved and treasured. My father loves me. I love saying that my heavenly father loves me of knowledge of assur assuring our hearts in faith and then enjoying that experience. And we build a lifestyle, number four, by continuing to do number one, number two, number three. And guys, I promise you, if you'll do that, you can, you're probably two or three days away from a, just a place where there's a permanent smile on your face because you know you're loved by the God of heaven. And that's a great place to live. And that's a great place we can give that love away. You know, the Bible says we love because he first loved us. Yeah, think about that for a moment. We, what it's saying is we love others because we first tasted and received of his love for us. And I think the main reason we as believers don't effectively love or reach out or do what we're called to do in terms of loving other people is that we're not really abiding in that love ourselves. We're trying to pour out from an empty bucket. <laughs> so here's a challenge to you. This may sound terrible for a pastor to say, but why not for a couple of days stop trying to love your neighbor as you love yourself and just for a couple of days, only short term, concentrate on God loving you and loving the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, strength of enjoying and abiding. Why not read those verses and pray and say, Father, what does it take for me to abide in your love? Selah. Great. Thanks for watching, guys. Well, I'm praying you have a wonderful Wednesday. WW. Now, have a, a really great Wednesday wherever you're at, whatever you're doing. God's for you, not against you. He is cheering you on in life. Uh, again, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button there. Check out my website, gjm.org, with all my events on there. Uh, if you're not getting our email newsletter, there'll be a link below. Sign up for that, and we will send you a free gift. Great. Thanks for watching, guys. Love you. Bye for now.